to talk in this video about how to change an I2C address of one of your I2C sensors so you can use multiple of the same sensor on a robot. Now each sensor comes with its own default I2C address. So for example, the color sensor comes with a default I2C address of 0x3c. This is different than the default address of the integrated gyro, which comes with a default address of 0x20. When the core device interface talks to sensors, it is actually talking to the address. It doesn't know the sensor's name, it's talking to the address. On the core device interface, all of the ports on the interface are actually connected together. This means that all of pin 1 are connected together, all of pin 2 are connected together, all of the third pins are connected together, and all the fourth pins are connected together. So whenever a core device interface talks to the I2C sensor and asks for any piece of information, it's actually talking to all the sensors at the same time. But it knows what the address is. So it knows that the default address for the color sensor is 0x3c. So if you're using one color sensor, it knows, it goes out and says, if your address is 0x3c, then tell me this bit of information. And that depends on what you're asking. And then the color sensor will talk back and tell the core device interface the piece of information it wants to know. Now let's say that you have two color sensors. Maybe you still have the integrating gyro, but let's say you have two color sensors on your robot. So then the core device interface reaches out to the color sensors and it says, if your address is 0x3c, tell me this thing. So then both of them say, oh, well my address is 0x3c. And then they start talking back at the same time, just like two little kids interrupting each other. And that's not gonna get any good data. So what we actually have to do is change the I2C address of one of these two sensors. So we can change one of them to 0x3a instead of 0x3c, and then the core device interface can determine which one is which, or it'll say if your address is 0x3a, and then only one of them is going to reply and not both of them. Let's take a look at this number, 0x3c. It doesn't look like a number that we see very often. The 0x part just means it's a hex number. There are a few ways that we can identify a hex number. Sometimes people identify them by putting a capital H in front of the number, but we are identifying it here by putting 0x in front of the number. Hex, uh, x is not a uh, valid hex number, so we know that if it is, starts with 0x, then the following parts are the actual number. Hex means that we have base 16. So just like when we count, we count up to 10, so each spot is worth 10. Uh, um, 10 values. So here, this is still one. That's still our one spot. And this guy over here, since we're counting base 16, this is our 16 spot. So we can find this just like we do in a decimal. We take in a decimal, we take the 10 spot times 10 plus one spot. Here we're going to take the 16 spot times 16. So this is 3 times 16 plus C. <laughs> Colton, you can't add a letter. Uh, yes, you can. So if we have 16 numbers for each spot, we got to have more than the 10 numbers that we have, 0 through 9. So now we're going to count 9 equals 9, you know, up to 9. And then um, A is 10, and B is 11, all the way up to F, which is 16. So C is 12. So we can get this by taking 3 times 16 plus C, which is 60. Why use hex? Well, hex is great because each one of these letters here is a nibble. This is a nibble, this is a nibble. Nibbles is a half of a byte. So two of these together is one byte, meaning eight bits. We're gonna find core device discovery at modernroboticsinc.com and then there's a link on the top, core device discovery. Here, there is a download for Windows and Mac. So of course, if you have the Windows version, download Windows, otherwise download Mac. So you can click that, it will download, and then uh, you'll have to go find that exe file that downloaded. This video is only going to I2C addresses, 
Um, if you want to do other things like motor control, servos, um, digital, analog, you can open this user guide and that will walk you through those other things. So I downloaded the program and got the EXE, brought that to my desktop so I can use it again later. I connected the core device interface to my computer using a USB cable. I'm not going through the, the power distribution module, don't need to. And then I connected two color sensors to my core device interface um, that, that I'm gonna be using on my robot. Now I'm gonna open up the program and it should automatically scan and find your device when you open it up. Uh, although if it doesn't, there's a refresh button here. So you can, if you're, uh, maybe your FTDI driver is still setting itself up and setting up com ports, it may take a minute the first time that you connect your core device interface to your computer to set up with the hardware. So if that's the case, you can say refresh and it should come up one of these. If you have motor controller, server controller connected, it may be in any of these, um, but you'll see core device interface here. I mean, uh, also this is serial number. This isn't what this video is about. The serial number, I recommend writing that on your device, uh, especially for motor controllers. It'll make configuring your robot a lot quicker. Then we go into advanced, and in the advanced window, we're only gonna be using this bottom left portion that is digital I2C ports. Here, we're gonna refresh the list, and it'll bring up all the I2C sensors connected to the I2C bus on the CoreBus interface. Um, but I have two sensors connected, Colton, and only one showed up. Well, they both have the same address right now. Both color sensors came with default address of 0x3c. So the Cordvice interface said, hey, what are your I2Z addresses? Checked all the I2Z addresses, and 0x3c came back twice, but it's the same address. So we need to change one of them. Not both of them. If we tell the Cordvice interface to change the sensor 3c to 3a, it'll change both of them and it'll, it'll start sending back some bad data because we have two things talking. So we should remove one of them. And I marked my sensors first. I marked one of them as 0x3A and one as 0x3C. I'm gonna disconnect the one that I marked 0x3C because it's good, I don't need to change it. I'm gonna keep connected the one with 0x3A marked on it. Now I'm gonna go to the change address column over here and I'm going to type in the current address which is the same as this guy, so 0x3c, and then I'm gonna type in what address I wanna change it to, which is gonna be 0x3a. Now remember, all this stuff is the 8-bit addresses. Then I'm gonna say change address, change it, now it's gonna scan the list again, and it's gonna come back with 0x3a. So now the color sensor I have attached is 0x3a. If you haven't marked it yet, mark it now. Uh, and that is a color sensor. I'm gonna connect now my other color sensor to another I2C port, and then I'm gonna refresh the list again, and it should come back saying that I have two color sensors. Since I have two connected, 3A, 3C, both color sensors, awesome, beautiful. And uh, this is the same process for any of the monitor box I2C sensors. Same process for changing the I2C address.